Good evening and welcome to the Orange Public Library for the Orange City Council debate. Tonight we will hear from current council members and their challengers. The debate format will be as such. Each candidate will receive a question and have two minutes to answer. Following each candidate's two-minute response, there will be a four to five minute debate period around a question given to each candidate. The timekeeper will yell time when the two minutes or five minutes has concluded. Prior to gathering, the candidates participated in a coin toss, and the first question goes to the agree upon winner of the coin toss. Mr. Mr. James Ward, what inspired you to run for this for the Orange City Council? So in uh, the year 2019, um, a group of concerned parents and myself uh, got together about uh, some issues that we were having in town, uh, specifically around the school board. Um, we slowly formed a very large group of concerned citizens, and our concerns grew larger than just school board. Um, in doing so, uh, I ended up founding an organization in our town called Seven of Society. Uh, this is an advocacy group uh, meant to display the concerns of constituents um, to the city at large. Um, and in doing so, uh, the rallying cry eventually came that the people in the community asked me to vote or asked me to run for political office uh, to be their representative. Okay. Councilwoman Summer Johnson. Hi, uh, in 2014, uh, when I decided to run for office, the South Ward was missing a lot. Most, uh, most importantly, there were no meetings that brought South Ward residents together with directors. Uh, council meetings, council um, residents would come. They wouldn't get answers right then and there. And as soon as I became council person, that was something that I implemented. Um, none of the other wards had any type of meeting so it was easy and I also allowed people from other wards to come. So my legislation came from the responses of the residents in those meetings. Um, never before were they allowed to actually ask a question and get an answer in the same minute. So it, um, it was a great thing. They were quarterly. I did them at Haywood Avenue School, Our Lady of the Valley School, and 400 Jefferson. Um, and it was a great thing. Uh, it combined the Valley, Seven Oaks, and everything else in between. Councilwoman Summers Johnson, as you are aware, the purpose of the City Council is legislated. What new policies would you introduce as a council member? Well, first, um, I don't like the way our council meetings are run currently. So before I could implement any policies for the city, I would have to change all policies for the council meetings. I would have two meetings. I would have the conference meeting on one day so that we could really get all of our um, kinks out so that when we came to the council meeting, it could be business. Um, right now, directors are um, told to come because Councilman Wooten and I asked for them to come. But our council president mixed up what we wanted. What we wanted was for the council, I'm sorry, the directors to come and answer the questions for the residents. So we didn't want them to come and do reports. That's an extra 40 minutes we don't need. Um, we wanted them to come and be able to answer questions about public works, questions about um, planning or anything like that. And currently, that's still not being done. So um, I would have to do the two-day uh, meeting I think that uh, the Zoom meetings are much more effective than in person, even though I would love to be in person. If there's a way for us to be in person and do the Zoom where someone is monitoring it and, and the residents are able to uh, become active, that would be great too. But that would be my policy because I don't think we can do anything with what is going on in the city council meeting the way that it's set up currently. Candidate okay. Ward, same question. So I have a number of new policies. Um, one, addressing many of the things that city residents have asked for over the course of the last four years. Um, I have a running list. Um, I would introduce legislation to accept uh, cannabis sales within the city of Orange Township. Um, we would introduce uh, road safety infrastructure improvements uh, that I've outlined and I was just explained that was sent to city council and to the school board, uh, both of which accepted that was just explained and said that there's a plenty of good idea. Um, we would introduce new construction uh, 
would have to have two cars per unit up from 0.4. Um, we would also say that new construction should include at least a quarter of all new, um, new parking spaces have uh, infrastructure for electric car charging. Um, we would put a moratorium on fossil fuel stations uh, as we want to be a part of the future of Essex County and the future of the United States. We need to reduce our dependency on fossil fuels and begin to go to an electric car future. That's going to take some time. There are currently 250 million gas-powered vehicles on the road today. It's going to take a considerable amount of time for us to make a full conversion to electric cars. But as you see, more and more every day, we're seeing more electric cars on the market. And every single manier manufacturer in the world has committed to, to uh, 2000, by 2025, having electrified fleets only for sale. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we would say we would form a Buildings and Places Commission um, to work on the, the infrastructure of our businesses and our uh, commercial districts. We would eliminate municipal redundancy, our two websites, the $700,000 in job vacancies every year uh, that the CBAC has recommended that we don't have anymore. I would establish an orange parking authority so that we could monetize municipal parking. Uh, we would also have some shared services between police, fire, and our municipal administration to reduce costs. Uh, we would establish a municipal grant and chart of, the, of a roadmap of projects so that we can see on our city website what's happening in our town and when is it going to happen. And if the schedule slides, it's adjusted. Um, we would establish CBAC as a permanent standing committee so that we have a watchdog over our uh, city budget and push Essex County to restore Orange Park to its historic plan. Time. Time. There's okay. more. <laughs> Candidate Ward. What budgetary concerns do you have? Our budgetary concerns are, are broad. Um, CBAC uh, outlined many of our concerns <coughs> that I'll reiterate here today. But uh, to break it down very succinctly, um, and my numbers are from 2020, but they haven't really changed that much. Um, our municipal budget was roughly $75 million. Currently, it's edging $90 million. Uh, our, our municipality has 2.2 square miles and it's 30,000.7 residents. If I break this down into a ratio, it's roughly $1 spent for 2.46 persons. We're vastly outspending our neighbors to the east, uh, which is one to 2.38, and then to the west, uh, $1 to 1.13 persons. Uh, in the South Orange, it's $1 to 2.2 persons. Our best estimate here is that East Orange is roughly twice the size of Orange with um, $152 million spent in their budget and $64,000 population. We are still outspending them even though they're twice the size of us. We need to make some serious adjustments to our monetary uh, spending um, and our total appropriations uh, just keep ballooning throughout the year. Uh, we're, we have a run rate of roughly $2 million every two weeks and it's been said in CBAC for roughly the last 20 years that this is unsustainable and we keep asking for more and more money without getting adequate services. Um, our, our tax rate up until the recent reevaluation was one of the highest in Essex County and in the right. state of New Jersey at 5.6%. After the reevaluation, we're roughly down to 3.33%, but we're still not getting adequate services for that amount of taxation. Um, we need to be working in um, we need to be working in at more revenue into that equation. We cannot take it all from taxpayers. Um, there are many other things that I have on our list for adding to our revenue Sorry. sources. Sorry. But we'll detail that later. Councilwoman Summers Johnson, same question. Okay, so um, the budget, 70% of our budget is salary, health benefits, and pension costs. And I just think that we need to look at the steps of our fire and police and make sure we have enough steps that it takes them a little bit longer to get to top salary. Um, as far as um, parking authority, that's something that actually is already getting started, thank God, because that is an issue throughout the entire city. And we're not overseeing it and it's starting to creep into the one family homes. Um, people are buying way more cars than they have driveway for and they want to park on the street and the residents in that area do not want them to park on the street. So it's something that um, we cannot ignore any further. Um, we also, I supported um, withdrawing from the state health um, benefits, which actually saved the city $3 million um, 
over three years. So there's a lot of things that we need to do as, as far as bringing in revenue um, in the budget and cannabis was number one for uh, Councilwoman Wooten and I. Um, unfortunately, we sat on a council with seven people and five of them voted um, against it. And um, there were petitions, we, you know, we let a petition drive for that and that was great. An illegal meeting took place, um, the mayor is suing us on 21 counts because of the illegal meeting. Uh, Councilman Wooten and myself had to obtain a lawyer because we're still fighting the cannabis because that was revenue that the citizens in Orange wanted and we feel as though their vote was ignored. Um, I think we negoti we're negotiating right now with all five of our um, like fire, police, uniform personnel and there is room in there for us to uh, negotiate and bring it down. Um, there was something else. There was, um, I know we wanted to do the e-ticketing. Um, we're constantly asking about the revenue for the meters. I know at one time the meters on Main Street were bringing in like $250,000 and with the broken machines and the vast emails about the machines being broken, that's lost revenue. If you ever try to go on Main Street, there's never parking. People probably park and go to New York for all we know. Um, <laughs> exactly. Um, we, we um, like recreation for example, they come to work at 8.30, they get off work at 4.30. They get off work when the kids get out of school. So there should be like a split time for them. They should be coming on maybe one o'clock so that we're getting more bang for our buck. And um, as far as activities, Right now, we have the Bengals, which is not an orange team. It's a private entity. We have a soccer program, which is not sponsored by orange. We need to do that more. As far as shared services, um, it's hard to say because we're not the same municipality as South Orange, and we constantly compare to South Orange. It's a different form of government, and we have a different form of government. The rules are not the same. Um, we would lose police officers. We would lose firefighters if we merge. Councilwoman Summers Johnson, what is your education background? I um, I am a teacher. I received a bachelor's from William Patterson University. I have a master's in education and supervision from St. Peter's University. Uh, I've been a teacher for 26 years in North Public Schools, and uh, that's my education. <laughs> Candidate Ward. So I have a bachelor's degree in, in architecture. It's a professional bachelor's. It's a five-year program. Uh, and I have a master's degree also from Pratt Institute. Um, I'm an architect, I'm an unlicensed architect, um, but I've been working in, um, in the construction field for the last 18 years. I'm also an educator. I teach uh, in the, the Columbia School of Professional Services, SPS. Uh, and I teach in the construction administration program. I've been there for the last um, three years. Candidate Ward. Do you believe all elected officials should attend the classes offered in Rutgers University that will allow them to become better public servants? Most definitely. Um, education is something that is near and dear to my heart. Um, I come from an educational family. Um, my mother was a college professor. My grandmother was an elementary school teacher. Um, those principles of continuing education are uh, embedded in me. Continually uh, educate myself on many things. Um, I think recently I got a OSHA 30, um, and uh, and I took the uh, MLUL course, the Municipal Land Use course, uh, for part for being a part of the the Orange Zoning Board. Um, it's important that we continue our education so that we can be uh, better legislators. Councilwoman Johnson. Um, most certainly, and I would love it to be like a pilot program. I know the police department had it with Fairleigh Dickerson, and it was allowing officers to get um, further their education. So I think that it would be great to hold it within the walls of City Hall, and I believe that Orange, I'm not saying it's different in a bad way. I'm saying I would like to be uh, better educated yearly with all the new things that come up, and I would like it to be only Orange in the room just because our needs are different than um, the other towns. When we go to those big workshops, you know, some of the questions come up we can relate to, and some of it is just so far out there, it's like we're sitting there for hours and they're talking about things from Cape May, you know, or something like that, that we can't relate to. So I'm always for education. Um, I'm also for, if you don't know the answer, it's okay to say you don't know the answer. It's okay to seek out um, the people in the offices in City Hall that might have the answer. It's okay to uh, seek out residents that might have the answer. 
Um, acting as though you know everything when you don't, I think is the biggest mistake. So I would definitely say um, continuing our education as, as um, elected officials is key. Councilwoman Johnson, do you own a home in Orange? I do not. I am so happy that my children, my husband, my parents, we all live under the same roof in the house that I have lived in since 1979. Mm -hmm. I had an option when I got married to purchase a house near Park Avenue, and I was all set and everything, and I am just, every day I think about it, my father is 89, my mother is 79, my kids are growing up around my neighbors who actually never left. And when things happen in my house, we've had boiler issues. We had to redo the whole electrical in my house. The thought of my parents having to do that on their own uh, would have broken my heart. But my husband was like, call the electrician. It was the best feeling for my mother to not feel helpless and for my dad, who's one of the men of the house, to feel as though his daughter and his son-in-law had their back. So I proudly live in the home with my parents. Kenvit Ward, do you own a home in Orange? Um, yes, I own my home in Orange. I think that um, living in a, um, in a multi-generational household is a fantastic thing. It's great to have those resources. Um, my wife and I do not. Um, we moved here from South Florida, and actually moved here from New York, but before then we moved here from South Florida. Um, my entire family lives in South Florida. Um, and I, I think that understanding the concerns that many people have, especially the ones that come to city council meetings, comes from homeowners. Um, I'm a part of a group of relatively new homeowners that have bought homes that were renovated, and homes that are renovated have concerns that are different in that we get immediately spot assessed. And I know the city and the county said that that's not what's happening, but that's not the experience of people who move here and who decide to buy a home and invest in this town. When we could go elsewhere, we choose to be in this town because we think that it's worth it. Um, we, we buy and we invest and we send our children to the public schools because it's important to do so. Uh, I think it's also important to do so in a community that looks like myself, that my children can see positive examples in. Uh, that is the reason why I moved to Orange. Um, there are many people that, that I talk to um, in looking uh, at homes, and they said, why would you move to Orange? Uh, they have all these problems. Uh, I said, well, I don't see anything but a beautiful community, and I think that um, most of those problems are easily solved by just the community coming together. Um, and that's why one of the very first things I did when I came here uh, was form an organization so that we could build community young families, uh, and there were a lot of established people that had, that had had families. They were a part of civic organizations, uh, and most of those have gone by the wayside. And so we saw an opportunity, and we took it, and we made a difference. Okay. Candidate Ward, have you been actively involved in voluntary organizations in the community? If so, please identify them and the role you played. So most of my time and advocacy in our town to the Seminole Society. Um, most people have heard me speak at a council meeting, uh, at a school board meeting, at a board meeting of any kind, uh, whether it's planning board or, or my role in the zoning board. Um, I'm very involved in the happenings of this town um, because it was put to us when our taxes were raised uh, when we first moved here in the first three months. That was when I met every single member of city council. And um, the outrageous rate that we were paying all of a sudden made our homes nearly unaffordable. Um, we needed to band together to build community so that we could make those changes. Councilwoman Summers Johnson. Can you repeat the question? Yes. Do, have you been actively involved in voluntary organizations in the community? If so, please identify them and a the role you have played. I have been, <laughs> I've been volunteering in this town since I guess I could. Um, that's all I know. I've done things prior to being a council person, but when I became a council person, that's when I really used my platform in that way. I've done pop-up pizza parties in the park. I've given prom dresses away, 300 that were donated from Macy's. I've done book bag drives. Um, there was a big thing with the little libraries, and I wanted to live by example, so I have one on my lawn, and then I wanted to make sure 
that I put them on the other side of town because if South Ward was filled with these wonderful books, why not the other you know wards? They um, they needed those books that looked like them as well. Um, we had students going back to college or going to college with no bed in the bags and things like that. So I did a bed in the bag for all of our students also to expose that our kids are going to college. Many people are telling people, oh, only go to school until you get to this grade and then take them out. That makes me sad, but I'm gonna say something about the negativity that comes from Orange. It actually comes from Orange. Um, we have websites, not websites, we have pages on Facebook that spend all day promoting negative energy um, for our town. We're, I think we're the only town that has that. I looked around, I couldn't find a page for East Orange, I couldn't find a page for North. Orange is the only one, so a lot of our problems, yes, they could be solved in a simple way, but they could also be solved with us protecting our town the way we protect our family. We don't run out there and say, my mom's an alcoholic or my dad's a drug dealer, but we have no problem with throwing the entire city under the bus. We say we wanna to work together, but then we go on um, these pages on Facebook, and it makes me sad because some of the people that are on these pages are way, way, way too up in age to be acting this way. I teach middle school and I'm constantly telling them, say it, forget it, write it, regret it. Like, don't put these things in writing. They're hurtful. You know, you should always be able to approach someone. So when I do these volunteer things, I do the things that I think the community needs. I did the prom dresses during COVID because I figured parents didn't have the extra money Sorry. to pay for these elaborate dresses. Councilwoman Summers Johnson, are you committed to a yearly survey of families, students, community residents, faculty, and staff about what they see as major strengths and shortcomings of the city council? If, if so, are you committed to publicly sharing the results? Let me tell you, I have been a teacher for 26 years. When you are a teacher, you are evaluated two to three times that you know about and you be in the middle of a lesson and here comes your administrator coming in. So we are always evaluated and you use those evaluations to get better. Um, as I go door to door, my 11 year old is with me. His job is to write down what the residents say. It's not always pretty. And he understands that politics, everybody's not gonna say, oh, I love your mother. Oh, she's the best person, you know. He understands that people have problems, they have concerns and that's fine. I would not only publicly take the criticism, I would use the criticism and I would get better. Wherever they said I was short, I would go find some sort of class and I would take the class because wherever I'm short, then I can't be a good council person. So I'm for that in my classroom, my principals, and I know, you know, my sister always gets on me, don't go so hard on, you know, being a teacher, but it's all I know. And in being a teacher, it helps me be a better council person because I speak for everyone. So when it comes to putting my, uh, being transparent and they say, oh, Summers Johnson is weak in this area or needs improvement in this area, I wanna see that. I'd rather see it on paper than hear about it behind my back. Candidate Ward. So my very first question about um, that sort of survey would be at what cost? Um, our town has not done a good job of um, being a good steward of the taxpayers' dollars and adding to that bureaucracy with an unknown cost would be my first question. Um, but we could easily solve this by leveraging technology. Um, we can have these concerns brought forth in real time rather than on a yearly basis by just using technology. We could have a single unified website, which we currently don't have, uh, that could have a QA, and a um, that could have a, a complaint box of sorts. Um, we can be doing this at very minimal cost utilizing te technology that currently exists. Um, on the Seven Oak Society website, we have a spot that talks about concerns, and you can drop a line there, and that goes immediately to my phone. I can answer you wherever I am uh, in a flash, and I can answer that question, or I can send you to other resources. And that's just me by myself. That doesn't cost much, and that cost is actually all burdened by myself. Um, if our town were to do that, my biggest concern would be at what cost because I would imagine that there would be some very large bureaucracy and some consulting company that would be involved that really wouldn't do that much, but would add to the burdens of taxpayers. Candidate Ward, if you are selected by voters, what are your priorities for the city of Orange Township and why, why and how did you select these issues? 
So our number one priority is um, getting a handle on our city's budget. Um, our priorities really should be about um, going forth and doing a uh, forensic audit. We need to figure out where yes. our funds are going. Yes. We need to figure out where, uh, who, who's taking it. Um, we've seen many instances, uh, in particular at this library that we stand in today, of money disappearing. The taxpayer dollars just fly out of our city and we don't get anything for it. Um, we're paying a lot of money for uh, our roadways um, and we're not seeing the results. It shouldn't take Everything. seven years to pave a 2.2 square mile city. Um, and we're, we're, we're falling behind on that schedule. Um, our priorities should, should be as such so that we can get um, our financial house in order. But in addition to that, um, we need to be leveraging technology so that we can better address yes. the needs of the people. We have two websites that don't give any of the information that anybody needs. We have, um, we have phone numbers that don't work in our city. There are basics about running a town that we're failing at, and we should be fixing that immediately. Councilwoman Simmons Johnson. Um, as a council person, the, the, the one thing that I think a lot of residents don't understand is some things um, creep into administrative um, where we don't run the day-to-day -day operations and we don't always put out on Front Street what we complain about. Uh, we have two websites. We do not, we, we, when I say we, not every council person wanted to have two websites. Of course, we want one working website. Um, and we have, uh, you know, I know I pay a fee every month so that my city phone is answered and that um, the message is taken 24 hours a day um, so that I could get back to residents as quickly as possible. Because what we're also trying to do is teach residents how to reach out. Because one thing I do not want is for anyone to speak for another resident because the message gets <laughs> construed. Uh, misconstrued uh, by the time it gets to me. And I'm like, did you want that? And they're like, no, I didn't want that. So we're not saying there aren't problems in the city of Orange, and we're not saying that some of them are not easy fix. Um, but I would say, of course, audits, that's definitely good. When we talk about the library, we don't own the library. We um, we have to give the library 500,000. Uh, we've been giving them, I think the last time we gave them like 700,000. They ended up with a surplus this year. Um, that wasn't really, I mean it was announced, but it wasn't announced the way that it should be. When good things happen in the city, for the life of me, I have not figured out why it's not shouted as loud as the negative things. And it's just, it's like I think we need a new PR because we can't get in front of ourselves because there's always somebody to push us back. Um, and you know, my top priority, like I said, with the council meeting, which is something that I can control immediately, would be the two meetings. I just think the meetings are too long. Residents don't want to sit there, you know, through all those meetings. The council people want to sit there through all those meetings. And everyone always yells it's a business meeting, but then they'll be in the chat putting everything else but business and acting in a non-business way, right? So I think that we need to get the meetings back to being business. And also, we get our, our packets and stuff like on a Friday, we're told to ask questions on a Monday to the Time. lawyers, yet people still come to council meetings to ask questions they could have asked Time. on Monday. <laughs> Councilwoman Summer Johnson, based on the prior two questions, how would they impact the municipal budget? And how would you implement your priorities legislative? I mean, having the two meetings, if we're doing it on a Zoom, it really wouldn't impact um, the budget. It would just make a lot of sense. Um, we talked about um, having the two websites. Again, we're not in agreement with that. But some of those things that are done in, in, on the council are done by the president. That's another thing a lot of residents don't understand. They're like, why don't you answer the question? Why you can't? You can't. The president picks what's going to be on the agenda. We present the legislation, and the president says what's going to be on the agenda. When we get the agenda, that's the first time we're seeing it just like you as the resident. So we get angry as well when stuff is taken off, and we don't even get an email to say why it was taken off. You know, most of the time it's taken off if it has Councilwoman Wooden or Councilwoman Summer Johnson's name on it, and we've accepted that, right? But we don't even know why this stuff was taken off. And whatever we put on there, it was put on there because a resident came to us, and we don't care if it was one resident, but a resident came to us, and unfortunately, we don't have the power um, to keep it there. So the things that I want to do, honestly, it wouldn't really impact the budget because 
we came out of the budget after COVID, where my budget, I had a little bit more money because my kids didn't go to camp and they didn't go to, we felt we should have come out of the city budget with money because there were things that we didn't do. That's why I didn't vote in favor of the budget, even though there's rumors going around I voted in favor of raising taxes. Don't know how I did that because I voted no to the budget, which would bring taxes up, and I voted yes to cannabis, which we're in court for now. Candidate Ward? Can you repeat the question? Yes. Based on the prior questions, how would they impact the municipal budget? How would you implement your priorities legislatively? So uh, I would introduce legislation to uh, buy an orange and hire an orange so that all city contracts support our local businesses. Um, I, would, I would propose that we do a strategic plan for retaining uh, and attracting diverse selection of businesses in our commercial districts enacting uh, BID, Business Improvement Districts. Um, I would establish a set of standards for all new construction and major renovation projects. Um, again, that building Buildings and Places Review Board, um, High Performance Building Practices, these would all be legislations. Um, Pre-wiring for solar panels uh, included in all new projects or substantial renovations. Uh, Pre-wiring for electric car vehicle charging, which I mentioned before. Uh, we need to also be planning for uh, sea level rise and mitigating water runoff. Uh, we're building a lot of new streets and roads, but we're not act, we're not adding swales for water to f to flow and to be collected into. Um, the two to one parking standard again for new parking uh, for new construction, um, and I would find support in our local institutions. Uh, we need a fully functional public library. Uh, there are grants for this, and we need to find those. Um, we need to reopen or reestablish an Orange Recreation Center so that our children have places to go and activities and programs that are planned for them that are not haphazardly put together um, because we don't have a center. Um, and we need to engage our civic organizations. Um, there are organizations that have popped up because of need in our town. Um, there's uh, Reggie Miller Motivation. Uh, there's the Settlement Society. There is, um, uh, there's not an Orange Friends of Metcalf Park. All of these are grassroots organizations that need support. Uh, and if we had partnerships with our city and them and helping them find funding, then they can also add to that programming and can build a, a civic and engaged society here in Orange. Okay. Okay. Candidate Ward, what is your understanding of the tax levy and how many are there? So um, the tax levy in our town uh, is something that's not, not up to debate, but most people don't really understand how it's broken down. Um, this is a rate from 2020, uh, but the, 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 the percentages don't change that much. Um, our municipality is 71%. Uh, the public library is 1%. Um, the municipal open space is another 1%, and the county gets 10%. Our schools only get 18% uh, because of the social economic demographics of our city. Uh, it used to be called an Abbott district, they have another, another name for it now. Okay. But the state subsidizes um, our city taxes, our, our property taxes that go into the city coffers. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, we had one of the highest tax rates in Essex County and in New Jersey at 5.6%. Um, up until the reevaluation, we all, we've all received our notices in the mail, and if you do a rough calculation, it's 3.33%, uh, which is still higher than our neighbors. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's in bringing us back into alignment. The, the bigger issue is that all of our property values have been raised substantially, and it didn't necessarily give us any sort of cost savings. I think I've only heard of maybe one person who actually saved money in this. Everyone else did get a substantial, many hundreds of dollars a month added to their mortgages mm -hmm. and That's rents right. because these, these costs are passed through yes. as well. Councilwoman Summer Johnson. Okay, same. Um, most, like I said, most people. Um, think that it's three parts, so they always think that it's county, school, and municipal. They forget about for orange, it's the open tax, and it's also the library. Um, I just think our numbers are wrong. Uh, we keep, we can't keep saying we have 30,000 residents. Like, we have to stop saying that today. <laughs> okay, today's the day we don't have 30,000 residents. 
we definitely have 50,000 residents, okay? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. let me help you understand why I know this to be true. Because <laughs> I was out on the street doing the census, okay? Mm -hmm. And many people did not do the census. Mm -hmm. And we also know that we have a lot of undocumented residents that are here, that mm -hmm. we are still obligated to educate, and I'm all for that, right? We are, if we do our police to population or police to resident ratio, it's never gonna be right if you use 30,000 as your number. Right. So we can't compare ourselves to East Orange or South Orange. We have to compare ourselves to someone that pays the same amount of taxes, that has the same amount of people, that has the same median income. We can't, we, I don't know where this came from. It's like a new thing. I've lived here since 1979. We have never compared ourselves to South Orange as much as we've done within the past five years. It's out, like I can't even take we are not South Orange, and, and this is what I'm trying to understand. When people came here from wherever they came before they came to Orange, they made a choice. They had a why. We're trying to figure out what their why is, right? And we need to figure out what their why is so we can make sure we keep them here. Now, what another part that people are not saying, what I found as I'm going door to door, some people were getting over it in a way, right? They were paying taxes on a house that was undervalued. Now the reavow has evaluated it correctly and their taxes went up. I'm saddened by that because I don't think people have an extra thousand going on. But some people weren't paying the right amount. I had a, a resident say to me, I was getting over. Like he said, I was like, what? He said, I was not paying the right amount. And now he, you know, he's upset, you know, but he said, I understand what's going on, but I'm upset. And I, I said, I get that. Like my property value went up, my taxes went up, my taxes went up and my property value went up. But what I'm saying is nobody's happy about that. I didn't vote in favor of the budget because we didn't roll up our sleeves. Forget about what CBAC recommended. But just leave that over there. We as a council did not roll up our sleeves and go step by step. So how could we even look at what the CBAC did when we didn't do our jobs? And when I asked about it, I was, it was voted down. On October 4th, I went off, I reposted the video because somebody forgot. In that meeting, we never had a work session. And the other council people lied and said that we had a work session. We did not. A work session is, and the CBAC is my witness because they were there, when you go line by line, you ask for 20,000 this year, and I'm only gonna give you 10. More with less, the mayor said, right? More with less, okay. We didn't do that. So that's why I didn't vote in favor of it. Councilwoman Wooten didn't vote in favor of it. Councilwoman Montague didn't vote in favor because he said he didn't read the budget. That's not the reason why I didn't vote in favor of it. I didn't vote in favor of it because I felt like we didn't do the job that we were being paid to do, and that was my issue, right? I didn't understand, like my kids play sports. There were sports that weren't offered because of COVID, yet there was money still allotted. Like it, trust me, I wasn't happy with it, but I'll vote no again if we don't roll up our sleeves. So when we mentioned the CBAC, I, I was at the park during that meeting. And, and when council president said, we, W-E, are not taking any of the recommendations of the CBAC, that hurt me because then I realized on that day, I really have no power. So anybody thinking you're gonna come in and these people are just gonna fall in line, no, they voted against cannabis, even though all these people in the town said they wanted it. They had an illegal meeting. The entire clerk's office, the entire clerk's office, even the assistant clerk who we paid to go to school against Wooten and I because she didn't live in Orange, she got her degree and left and took her to another town. Right. And she's, she's, she, she left with her degree Time. that we paid for. Time. Councilwoman Summers Johnson, what is the impact on the municipal budget and the residents in the city of Orange Township? What is the impact? <laughs> it's major, it's everything. And then they're not getting the services. My, my son plays basketball at the Union Boys and Girls Club. When I go in the Union Boys, Boys and Girls Club, my heart breaks because why can't I have this in Orange? The kids in the Union Boys and Girls Club look just like my kids. Um, my kids do play baseball, thank God, through the city. But even with that, we offer these services, but it seems like, how are you gonna offer flag football, track, baseball, I'll name another sport, all at the same time, all at the same day, and then when you only got five people out there, you say, these parents don't care. What? How can they be at all these different things? Like, why did you decide that spring was gonna be football? What happened all year? 
Why through COVID did my child still play basketball for the South Orange um, um, Y? Why it just was, you know, less kids, but we stopped totally. My son took gym class through, through Haywood, you know, through school. Why didn't we offer Zumba online? Like, why didn't we do something? Now, I see it's a lot of people moving in and having babies and little three and four year olds. I wanted to have recreation for the little three and four year olds because I was taking them to South Orange. Everybody thought it was a South Orange program. It wasn't. South Orange rent Our residents are not getting the services. How do I know? I keep getting calls. Garbage didn't pick up my stuff. Then I have to send the little truck over there. Or recycling didn't pick this up. Why? Because the chart is hard. People look at my house to see, is it paper? Is it is it plastic? Nobody knows. These are simple things that we should have. And I argue for these things. I have emails to prove it. And I'm going to continue to be the voice of the people because I'm not happy. I want to spend my money in my town. We only charge $25 for sports. I pay $575 someplace else. So it's not the money thing. We'll pay it. We just want quality. What is the impact on the municipal budget and the residents in the city of Orange Township? So um, I said before that our city budget is, is creeping to $90 million per year. And as we showed before, we have a ratio that is roughly twice outspending our neighbors to the east. That east Orange um, is, uh, is a population of, of um, 64 million. Because of, of uncapped uh, salaries and, and overtime, um, in 2020, during the pandemic, we had 2.28 million dollars in COVID-only overtime. Um, this is the result of a of a um, over request that I filed, and when we asked for the time sheets for that COVID-based overtime, the town told us that they were unable to give it to us because we have an antiquated time reporting system that they were unable to do while we're working from home. That's unacceptable. And to the point where uh, an individual who ended up losing their job in the city of Orange Township because they more than doubled their salary to $389,000 per year. And then their base salary was $183,000 per year. Uh, it was a gross misuse of federal funds that person lost their job. Uh, and it's because we don't have adequate checks and balances. We're not spending our we're not spending our money in the ways where where it should be. Um, to remind people, CBAC is a committee that's picked by council members. So if the council members are not listening to the people that they that they picked and assigned, that's a larger problem. Um, but in addition to that, there are basic things that should be taken care of by the city. Um, we have uh, a garbage schedule, as mentioned uh, previously. Um, that was an issue that I knew that I could solve immediately. And when we started the Seven Oak Society, we, we made this book um, where we, where we uh, give it to every new resident. And in doing so, uh, we, we did something that was really important. We made our own garbage schedule that's legible. Mm -hmm. This is putting city funds to use. And I did this myself. Um, we should. We should be doing things like this, and we should be doing it for the entire city, uh, if not just the South Orange. No, I was asking where did yours go? Time. Time. Candidate Ward, what is your election platform? So my platform is, is is talking about dealing with the needs of the residents. Uh, many people are are upset about how our city is run. Um, I will do my best to improve the discourse between city council members. Uh, I've done this by working behind the scenes for a number of years. Um, you, have to, uh, you have to barter behind the scenes. You, in those council meetings isn't where decisions should be made. You should be talking about these things and figuring out what are the concerns that are happening across town. Our town is only 2.2 square miles. And if you take out Orange Park, it's really about a mile square. Um, the division that happens from the north, south, east, and west doesn't make any sense. Uh, all we're doing is cutting off our nose to spite our face. We need to be talking about issues that are for the entire town. Because when I talk about things like uh, onboarding and offboarding from the schools, when I do approach the logistics plan, this was an issue that I was having while dropping off my children at Haywood School. But I also noticed that it happens everywhere in our city. 
Um, the issues that we are talking about, when we say that we're having an issue in the South Ward, they're issues throughout our city. Exactly. Um, we shouldn't be talking about them by saying, I want this for, for South or North or East or West. These are problems for our entire city. We're not gonna make this place better until we approach it that way. Councilwoman Summers Johnson. Um, well, how can I say it? Um, if you have people that are not willing to put the people first and put their differences aside, it makes it very difficult. Um, you can work with anyone as long as they're willing to work with you. Um, when we uh, used to try to you know, get along and, and, and say, okay, we're gonna try to uh, do this and put this forth, when you sit in a council meeting and somebody votes no to something that they were speaking highly of, you're like, what? I know there were times when there was an A roof, okay, and which I didn't even know what it was, but it's a little plastic piece that goes on the, the um, phone pole so that our Jewish residents can go from their home to the synagogue. Mm -hmm. Doesn't bother me, I'm not Jewish. I have Jewish residents, I definitely wanna make sure they can get where they have to go. We had have, we have council people that were like, I'm voting no. Right. Mm -hmm. So we had to bring a rabbi and a whole synagogue <laughs> into county chambers. Mm -hmm. How embarrassing, right? How embarrassing just to show that you have to do this. We had uh, a LGBTQ flag racing. We had council people that said, I'm not going. Councilman Wood and I were outside. We were being called every name in the book, but we have people of that, you know, they're, they are of the LGBTQ community and we have to do something about it. So getting along, I even said it on October 4th, when you um, deal with people who, where there's friction, as a leader, you're supposed to bring in someone, you're supposed to like sit in a circle and really talk about what the issues are. But the thing is, there are really no issues. The problem is people are scared to stand out on their own, which is what cannabis showed us. Um, now they're all backtracking and in support of cannabis because they see that the residents are like livid. So they're like, I kind of want it. I kind, you know, we're not dealing with rational people. We're dealing with people who should not be in public office. Um, they have never had a, a meeting in their ward ever in eight years, six years, four years, whatever. They've never had a meeting, which means they never really cared what the residents had to say. South Ward is the leading of the meetings. Thank you. Okay, thank you, candidates. At this point, we are open to just a few questions, if anyone has any. Um, Sylvia Pastor, 391 Fairview Avenue, 19 years here in Orange. Proud Orange resident prior to that, lived in East Orange and prior to that, Newark. So an advocate for urban development and chose to be here. I do, and that's very important to me. Mm -hmm. And I know both candidates. Mm -hmm. So to me, one of the things that I'd like to see in our town is unity, and there's been so much division. I'd like to hear from both of you. You are neighbors, we are neighbors. Mm -hmm. What do you see in the other candidate, and how will you be able to work with that person if you are not the winner? Because I do not want more division. I want a leader who unites and takes vision and is not afraid to change. So I need to hear that you will unite and work with the other person beside you. Okay, so I have been a council person since 2014. The other people that lost to me said that they would work with me and that they would be there if I needed them. That was not true. Um, not only did they not work with me, they caused further division. Um, there is division in my ward right now, and it's like a Mason-Dixon line with Scotland Road and the Valley. And So working with someone, I'm gonna continue to be who I am because I'm not going anywhere. I'm raising my kids here. I'm not moving. I've been on Sterling since 1979. So I'm willing to work with anyone, but it has to be um, pure. It has to come from the heart. It can't be phony. It has to be um, where I know that this person really wants to work with me because one thing that we have found being in office is people will say one thing and literally have the knife like ready behind your back. I'm sorry, but this is that's how I have to say it because that I'm not a politician. So when I got into it and I'm saying 
I'm talking to a person, they're saying one thing, and then I turn around and something else is happening. Like, I'm telling you, when you work with people, you just have to be honest. So I'll work with anyone. I, I'm not going anywhere. Unlike the people that ran against me before, that like I said, when I say they didn't work with me, they actually tried to divide further you know, the South Ward. So I, I have to work with whoever's in office, and I did that prior to me becoming a council person. So um, when we formed the Seven Up Society, uh, one of the first people that I asked to be a part of this organization was Jamie Simmons Johnson. And uh, I don't know if you remember, the first thing that I said, I said, not only are you our council person, but you're a very close neighbor of mine. If there was not a house in front of my house, it would be Jamie's house. Uh, when her boys play outside, I can hear them. And when something happens on our street, I'm sure she can hear it as well. Um, I would say that um, we've been able to do a number of things together, um, and I would I would definitely be the person that reaches out. Um, when, we, when we wanted to do the little libraries, it was something that happened at the beginning of the formation of Seven Up Society. Uh, we had a school teacher who was in the neighborhood who was going to go work for a book publisher, and she said that we have access to a lot of books, and I see that there are these little libraries that are in the, in, to our neighbors to the south and south orange, and we'd like to bring something like that here. And the very first person I said, call, I said, call Jamie Summers Johnson, because she's our council person, and she, we need to change um, the zoning ordinance that doesn't allow you to build on the property line. In order to do the little libraries that are located on the property line, you're not allowed to build there, and we had to work with our council person to make that change so that it can happen. Um, in addition to that, um, when we had the cannabis uh, legislation uh, that was denied, uh, there were uh, petitions that were going around, and again, the first person I called was Jamie Summers. I said that we have to work together to do this petition so that we can unite the voices, so that we can have uh, as many numbers as possible. Um, the process that we were doing was called a referendum, referendum or initiative and you have to have a certain number, percentage of the population, sign in the affirmative so that it forces the, the decision of city council. And if you have a super majority of that electorate, um, they, it doesn't even go to referendum, it becomes the rule of law. Um, mm -hmm. we, we unfortunately couldn't find a way to work together in that, and that's why we're in the situation that we're in now, where we did two separate petitions for the same thing, and people were very confused. Um, but I would definitely pledge to work with every member of city council, including our representative, because this is how you get things done. Uh, I'm, I've long been a person who works in the background, and uh, I'm very comfortable working that way. Thanks. Karen Love, and I've lived in this town since 1987, and I chose to live here. I looked for my house, because Bergen County was too expensive. So I came to Essex County, and there was my house. My issue is this. I have been coming to city council meetings online, offline, whatever, and what concerns me is I look at the city council as legislators. I expect you to propose and submit legislation that pertains to taxes, garbage, redevelopment, um, Main Street, tree, shade tree commissions, and I never hear any of that, never. And whenever a question comes up before the city council, the city council is like, oh, ask the business administrator. I didn't vote for him. I didn't elect him. I don't care what he has to say. I wanna know what you guys have to say and what legislation you propose. We never hear that. And you're right, the way the city council meeting goes, it's a nightmare. It's like, a, I don't know what it is. It's almost like, and when I look at the meeting, everybody's opening their packet. It's my understanding that you get your packet two weeks before. No, two days, two days. That's crazy. That's crazy. That should change. But there's so, much, there's so many things that could go on just normal, the normal way you do business. Most of us are business people. We run our own businesses or we work for major corporations. And it's just insane to me the way business is done, the way our, our computer systems, let me tell you something, IBM, <laughs> IBM wrote Orange a letter that I have. This had to be 
92-93, to the city of Orange, and they say, if you don't change your computer system, you will get no maintenance from IBM. We're done. It's too old. Our disk was 98% full at that point. When we had this the situation where we said, oh, we got hacked. Mm -hmm. Orange didn't get hacked. Orange crashed. Because it was ridiculous. And I, it, the, I can't even imagine how we function. Because I'm a software engineer, so I'm well aware of it. It is amazing to me that we can do any business at all without computer system. We're writing stuff down. We got the key punch machine over there, people putting their time. <laughs> 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 So I'm going to try to answer. So this, okay, no, my okay. is answer. The city, what is the city council going to do to make, that, to make this more effective? Because it's not effective at all. Well, I just want to say, some of the things that you don't see in the actual council meeting, um, and the reason why I mention Councilman Wooten a lot is when you work a job, you usually link up with people who have the same work ethic as you. You're not trying to work with somebody that's trying to get over that's, you know, you're not trying to work with somebody like that. So it's good when I work with her because she's at large, and that way she gets to see the whole city and then I get the South Ward. We have so many issues and we meet so many times privately with the garbage company. So when they come to the council meetings for items of discussion, we're, we're blown, you have to see our faces half the time because we're like, why does this have to be a meeting for the whole city to see? Why can't two or three representatives meet with them? Because we're still trying to figure out why they haven't been fined for not being out of our town by like one o'clock. When I come home from school, I don't want to see my garbage outside. And when they talked about it earlier, in the earlier debate, they talked about a rat issue. Well, yeah, that's going to be a big issue if the garbage has been sitting outside since the, the day right. before. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So what, what I'm trying to say is we get put in a, 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 in a pack with the council. And it is, it is the most frustrating thing because that's not who I am. I do not like half the things that go on, but I'm one vote. So trying to convince them, we, we have conversations. We're like, can you, can you be with us on this? Or Councilman Wooten has said in meetings, what do I need to do to this legislation so you'll support it? That won't even work. So it's, it's very hard if people are not willing to put the people first. We're not okay with, with the crashing of our, our, our system. The website is horrific. How stuff gets sent out is horrific. We send stuff out a week. Like, we ask for a calendar in the summer for fall, uh, uh, winter, and spring, because that's how we plan our lives. We need to know now where our child's gonna be in camp. We've asked for this stuff. We've asked for it in emails. We can't hire and fire, because if we would, half the people in City Hall would not have a job. That'd be a good thing. I promise you, I promise you, but we don't have that. That's not, you know what I mean? So it's, it's hard when I go, like even the website or the link to sign your kid up for sports. I mean, we feel like it should be like an orange wreck with a QR code. That thing is 45 letters long. I can't even text that to someone. Like, it's just things that don't make sense. And we, we constantly, and, and I don't have friends in City Hall that I would be scared to offend because now you're talking about my parents that are seniors that get senior notices at the last minute that wouldn't know half the stuff if I didn't tell them. Um, baseball and these sports and stuff, you get the, the sign, that it's, everything's late, everything's late. That's not how I was raised. Um, and then we get upset when no one attends. But I don't even hear the legislation being proposed. Well, the thing is, we can't, let me just say this. We can't put stuff forth if we know it's going to be voted down. It's, it's like we know we get, if we know they're going to just vote it down on site, putting it up is just, is just to amuse you. It's, it's really a waste of time, which is not fair. They literally say no to all of those type of things. The things they say yes to, like we didn't want barbed wire in the, in the city. They voted in favor of barbed wire. I don't want barbed wire near me. Okay, Mr. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Ward, I'm so sorry. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, sorry so um, my mother uh, is, a, um, is, a, is a council person in the town I grew up in. Uh, she was the mayor of that town in the 90s. She recently was reelected. Uh, and one of the first things she did as a mayor was to um, institute uh, a cap on the, the, the length of meetings, uh, and she instituted a legislation to um, 
do all of the city business, what we, what we do on our consent agenda, as one single item, uh, but also we had a meeting about what enters into that a day ahead, uh, much like what mm -hmm. uh, Jamie said before. Um, I think that we need to do something like that here mm -hmm. because the business of our town that's mundane shouldn't even be discussed. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. It should be on the, the council agenda so that people can read it so that there's record. Um, but in addition to that, um, we need to just use technology in a smarter way so that we can communicate these issues and their solutions to the constituents. Um, I did this already uh, with the Seven Oaks Society. Um, many people have called and asked, uh, and I, I joined, I recently moved to the community, I got the welcome package, it was delivered at my doorstep. Uh, most of those I actually delivered myself. Um, and forgive me if anybody didn't get one, uh, it's just me that does it. Um, but we, but we have we have the largest active crime watch in the city, encompassing 20, 20 blocks and two hundred fifty three registered households. Um, in doing so, we knew that we couldn't address everyone's concerns because I'm in so many other meetings already. We use technology. Uh, we have a Slack group. The Slack group allows people to chat in real time. If you have an issue or a concern, uh, we point people in the certain directions. Uh, I have file storage there as well. So if somebody, say, wants the garbage schedule or need to understand the tax rate or wants to see the video that we did on how to appeal your property taxes, it's all there. And I can point yes. you to it on my phone, yeah, on the train, in Manhattan, on yes. vacation, in Thailand. I can send you information. I can send you information anywhere at any time. And this is just me doing this. Uh, there are other people that are on there that also answer questions as they arise. Uh, but we need to be using technology in a smart way so we can address the needs of the community. Um, much like um, um, the Honorable Jamie Saunders said, the signing up for, for parks and recreation is absurd. They'll send, you, they'll send you a JPEG email that has a web address on it. You can't click it. And then and once you do finally type it, there's like four layers mm -hmm. to actually signing up for something very simple. Um, when you talk about software development, there's a thing called friction and drop off. And so if you have too many steps to checking out for buying a product, it's shown that people actually drop off and they don't complete the purchase process. We need to be looking at our constituents as customers and giving them good customer service and good customer experience or UX, uh, user experience, when they're, it, when they're experiencing anything having to do with our sound town, whether it's in person or digitally. We need to have a unified process. We need to have people that are thinking these things out. Um, and if I can do it with my very small resources and all the many things that I already do, if I can do this um, for the people that are in the Seven Oaks Society, we can do it at a larger scale for the entire town. Absolutely. Okay. Another question. Hi, I hope this is the last question of the evening. Um, so I'm trying to make it kind of <laughs> <laughs> just, just recently for me, I've been getting um, a large amount of phone calls from renters that felt like they quote unquote didn't pay into the city, therefore they didn't have a voice. And I didn't know what to do to get them involved, so I just started um, a renters association and I started providing them with uh, legal aid because all of the umbrellas of COVID are now being taken away and there's a threat that they're going to be evicted. So for me, that was something that I wanted to start for a long time and it took me forever and I finally got that started. 
um, because I think people look at the South Ward and they see they look at the houses, but they don't realize that the largest majority of arts of the South Ward are renters, and um, they've been ignored for for many many years. So trying to give them attention and things like that. Um, when we talk about you know why vote for me, I I always laugh when it comes to council because to be the president of the United States. Uh, you have to live in the United States for 14 years, you have to be 35 years old, and you have to be um, a citizen. <laughs> but the standards of being a council person, they just, they make these things like, you know, everyone that gets their petition signed is qualified to do the job. For me, it's, I still have work that I have to do. I have a very good working relationship with a lot of the directors, um, and not a working relationship where we're so close that I can't call them out on what they do. My biggest issue in the South Ward, I would say, would be, other than taxes, would be like garbage. So having a close re relationship with Public Works, they'll go pick up someone's garbage when the garbage people don't come or, you know, and they don't have to do that. They could, I mean, they really don't have to do that. And it, it just speaks to them like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get somebody right over there. Um, I don't know. I, I, did, I got in office just as a mom, just as a resident, just as someone that had seen Orange with 12 baseball teams and, and a game day with kids from all over the city in one park. And there is, there is absolutely no reason why we can't unify. I don't like saying South Ward. I honestly, I honestly do not like saying it because it already separates me. When I'm out of the city of Orange, I just say I'm from Orange. You know, saying South Ward, and it's always a battle, oh, you're South Ward, you think you're better than everyone, and I've never felt that way. And, 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 and I'm going to tell you, um, I've always said I live near Seven Oaks, because my entire life, we've never lived in Seven Oaks. So I, when we say that, like I'm just being honest with you, it was always looked down on for people when they said that. And I, I see you shaking your head, but I'm telling you what I know from 1979, <laughs> that we did not say that. And I'm just being honest with you. Um, it was a way of people thought we thought we were better than other people. I am not saying that is how people feel. I'm saying to you that it was an automatic, you don't live in the valley or you don't live in the project. And I never wanted to ever feel better than anyone. My parents are teachers and you know we, we played in the boys' wide that's now McDonald's with any kid. So anything that divides me I don't want to make that my label. And again, I don't want to offend anyone. I don't want anyone to feel like if you live in Seven Oaks that I'm trying to say, you, I'm not saying that. I'm telling you that there's a division in my South Ward that I have to get out because it's angering people. And they're feeling not worthy of my attention. They're like, well, I didn't want to call you because I don't live in a house and I don't pay taxes, so I didn't think you were going to call me back. And I'm like, what? You know, so for me, I have a big job to get people to understand I don't care where you live. I'm going to try to support you. So that's just me just being as honest as I can be. And I'm sorry again because, you know, I want to be careful not to offend people because some people you really, you know, it's important to you on what part you live in. And guess what? When the projects were up, it was important for people to say they lived in the projects. It was important. It was it was important, and and I, I never really understood it, but I I get it now because they were a community. They were a community, and they didn't let people come in their community and mess it up until later years, which is why they had to come down. But when they were first built, it was I hear stories. It was beautiful. You know what I mean? So I, I guess for me, I got a hard job with unifying my ward. So. The question to me was a little bit different about overcoming adversity and uh, doing something about it. Um, one of the biggest challenges that I've had um, in moving into Orange and probably for the last five years uh, since I've been a father is establishing a community um, that is supportive of myself, that's supportive of my two young children. Um, we chose to move to Orange because we wanted a suburban lifestyle. Uh, to raise our children in, uh, similar to how my wife and I were raised in South Florida. Um, we moved to New Jersey knowing two people, two people in this entire state. Um, and we needed to build a community that was supportive of us uh, and those other two people because they were also building a young family and they didn't know anybody else here either. 
Um, we convinced another family to move here, and then there were nine of us, uh, and then our children have grown. Um, we decided to form this community organization out of a need to build community because we don't have family that's here. Uh, but we wanted to have a supportive community. Uh, this past Easter, we had something like 60 families that got together in a neighbor's backyard so we could do an Easter egg hunt. And it yeah. happened, it was the culmination of that building community effort. Um, yeah. we, wanted, uh, we wanted to build community for our children. We also needed to build community so they could make a change. Um, that community ended up becoming uh, a moniker, that moniker is SLS, it's a, it's a rallying cry. Um, SLS is also the acronym that is Seven Oaks Society, it's a name. Uh, we have members that are from all over the city. Mm -hmm. And yes, there is the stereotype that is given that says Seven Oaks Society is over there, it's not over here. Um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we, we made a name because it fit our purposes we made a name because it also harkened back to the great history that our area is known for. Exactly. Uh, when people have pride in a place, they treat it differently. Uh, and when you give it a name that's tied to a legacy, whether it's your own, because the people who named that didn't look like me, we chose to adopt it uh, because we wanted to make sure that we didn't do um, what I call a Christopher Columbus syndrome, come into a place and say that we want to change it into our vision. We were saying, we're coming to this place and we're recognizing the history that's here. We want to add to it, we want to develop it, we want to nourish it, and build it into something for our families and for a positive future. Okay. okay great. Yeah. This concludes the city council candidate debate. Thank you. Any more questions? That is it. Oh, you have one. I'm sorry. Somebody have one. Okay. Real quick. I'm trying to, um, I jotted it down because I was like crazy in my head. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we shared it. I, I'm probably the only one in here who lives in both Orange and East Orange because my building 377 sits in both right by Orange Park. Mm -hmm. I have to vote in, Orange, in East Orange, but my aunt and uncle, we moved to 745 Sterling in Orange, um, I guess in the 90s, mm -hmm. and so I kind of feel like I'm, you know, part of Orange too. And of course I have friends in Orange. So anyway, um, I love that you chose Orange to come here. Orange has always been a great community. I've always admired it as a long time East Orange resident. So I appreciate someone new coming in. Fresh ideas, always welcome. Um, so from an outside perspective, it seems like you, Candidate Ward, and um, Councilwoman Summers Johnson want the same things. That's what I'm hearing. I'm really hearing that. And so usually when someone runs against a sitting council person, it's because they are unhappy with the job they're doing. So I'm interested to know, when you decided to run, did you sit down with her and have a conversation about the things that you were looking for, what you were unhappy with, to see, you might have figured out that you all were on the same page, and how you could then work with her to make these things happen. Because the, the council person that I know, and I've known uh, Jamie since the 80s. You're not old. Yeah, I'm not old, I'm sorry. Girl, I was born in the 90s. But Jamie has been a council person her whole life, meaning, People go to her, she has, she comes up with how to make things better. She does the most with the least as a teacher. I use Orange Pools because East Orange system is whack. I'll say <laughs> that. I work for them and I'm saying it. It's, it's, you know, but Jamie was director of aquatics for over 25 years in Orange. She knows the community and you don't know it as well as she does because you're new. So I just feel like the two of you together would be like phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But right now, you're divided. So what do we, how do we come to a place where we can be on the same page and really move orange forward? So did you have that conversation with her? That's my question. So, so I've had a conversation with Jamie, not during this campaign, but 
prior, we did talk about um, some political ambitions that I had. Um, I've said this in, in small rooms, uh, but I'll say it here uh, at this debate. Uh, I'm not running a campaign of opposition. This doesn't have to do with Jamie Summers. This has to do with the will of the people. Uh, I said that people asked me to run. Uh, the people that I've been their advocate for the last three years, they said, you have to run. Um, and I said, well, I would be interested in that, but it's not necessarily something that I was my goal here. Okay, um, that's my, good to know. My interest was about filling the, the needs and the will of the people, and that was shown uh, when I said, I said, if I choose to do this, I said it to the Seven Oak Society members, I said, I don't wanna be knocking on doors and begging people to sign these petitions. Uh, you guys need to show me that you want me to be your representative, and we had an event. Uh, we were given the nominations, I believe it was January 6th, is that right? January 6th. Something like that. Mm -hmm. um, that was a Tuesday. Uh, I received it at, at 11 o'clock in the day, and uh, we had an event. It was actually a council meeting, and I spoke on that council meeting, and we also hosted an event. Uh, this was during like the height of the last COVID scare, and it was a drive-by event. People drove up, and they signed the petitions, and I had volunteers, and they kept going, and we only needed 55 signatures to get on the ballot, and by the end of that night, I had about 116. Mm -hmm. uh, it was resounding, and it was affirming for the choice that was put to me. Uh, I didn't decide to run against Jamie Summers, I decided to run for the people of Orange. Okay. 